won't take that long. Okay. All set? Okay, welcome to the, wow, December 14th <laughs> Board of Select Review. Everybody join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under it, and justice for all. <laughs> I can look straight up there. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> All right. Should I just make the motions as per normal, Mr. Burke? Yeah, go ahead. Why don't you make the motions? Uh, All right. I move to approve the regular session meeting minutes of September 26, 2015. Second. I believe I did look at those already. What, are they the copy here? I'm pretty sure I already looked at Second. I just want to take a quick peek and make sure I looked at them already. They're not in my book either. They're not in here, right? No, they were emailed last Thursday. Oh. Yeah, yeah, then I'm sure I looked at them then. I'm good. I'm good. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh. Okay. Now I find them. All right. So the public hearing, we got to wait to 7 15, right? Mm -hmm. All right, what else can we do then? Let's see. Appointments. Appointments. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so I just literally have to read it as is, right? So, okay, I'm going to read through it. I know we received some, some communication on at least one of these, right? So we'll do that in the discussion. Sure. That's all right. I'll make the motion. Yeah, I'm just looking for it on the... Uh, all right. Let me take a deep what breath. Is, what number is We're it? We're doing on? these all at once, right? I did... We'll do yes. Yeah, and we'll do consent calendar. So if we e. need to pull something out, we'll yep, pull it six out. Yep, 6E. 6E. Oh, what are you you're looking for me to go to 6E? I'm telling Chris where to find it on the Thank agenda. Thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, excuse me, Chris. Are you you suggesting you want to go to that next, or shall I just go to the uh, go to the the licenses? You can't, you can't go to the licenses. Oh, those licenses. Yeah. Six B. Okay. I'm fine with going six B okay. first. Good. I mean, there's a lot of them on here, so I can. I okay. Can go you ready? Let them rock. <sighs> I move to renew the following 2016 licenses pending departmental approvals. Restaurant, all alcohol, common victuller, Blackstone Valley Pizza, Inc., doing business as High, um, Hideaway Pizza, 95 Uxbridge Road. MJM McCarthy Greenhouse, Inc., doing business as the Greenhouse Wood-Fired Pub, 3 Cape Road. Traha, Traha, I guess that's how you pronounce Traja, it. Traha, Traha. Traja, Jaha, Traha, okay. LLC, 25 Cape Road. Restaurant All Alcohol Common Victualler Entertainment, Miss Menden Diner, 14 Uxbridge Road, Building 16. Restaurant All Alcohol Common Victualler and Entertainment, Imperial Ballroom, LLC, Grandview, 6 Nipmunk Drive. Stephen Hacks, Hackinson, doing business as Willowbrook Restaurant, 16 Hastings Street. New England Steakhouse, Inc., doing business as New England Steak, Steak and Seafood, 11 Uxbridge Road. Alicante LLC doing businesses Alicante Mediterranean Restaurant and Lounge, 84 Uxbridge Road. NLCK Inc. doing business as Lowell's Restaurant, 75 Cape Road. General All On Premise All Alcohol Common Vic, mm -hmm. Miss Menden Diner 2, 20 Uxbridge Road. Package Store All Alcohol Common Victualler, Lab H. Is that how? I just say L A B H. I'm L A B H sure. Inc. Doing business as Menden Wine and Spirits, 32 Hastings Street. P&P Liquors, Inc. Doing business as Pop and Cork, 1A Cape Road. Restaurant, Wine, Malt, Regular, Common Victualler, ATLK, LLC. Doing business as Deluxe Pizza, 32 Hastings Street. Restaurant, All Alcohol, Common Victualler, Automatic Amusements and Entertainment. Roy Ventures Corp. doing business as the End Zone Sports Pub, the Outer Limits, 39 Milford Street. General On Premise Wine and Malt, regular, Common Victualler Movie, Entertainment and Jukebox, Fat Brothers, LLC, doing business as Menden Twin Drive In, 35 Milford Street. Common Victualler and Entertainment, Rad Skate Park, LLC, 49 Uxbridge Street. North Men, LLC, doing business as Uber Cafe, 32 Hastings Street. Restaurant, all alcohol, common victualler, automatic amusements, pool table entertainment, Barry's Place, LLC, 35 Hastings Street. Common victualler, A&Z, Golden Corporation, doing business as DB Mart, 1 Milford Street. 
Jashal Enterprises, Inc., doing business as Sunny Farms, 1B Cape Road, Farage LLC, Inc., doing business as Subway, 32 Hastings Street. CL Pizza, Inc., doing business as Nana's Pizza, 1B Cape Road. Gold Medalist, LLC, doing business as Gasco Fuel, 25 Cape Road. D&E Donuts, doing business as Dunkin' Donuts, 4 Uxbridge Road. Imperial Gas, LLC, 8 Uxbridge Road. Clough School, 10 North Ave. Clough School? They have a cafeteria. Okay. 10 North Ave. Misco Hill School, 148 North Ave. Adult Entertainment, Showtime Entertainment, George Fanari, Trustee, 49 Milford Street. Class 1. Okay, so I have to submit, I don't know what Class 1 means. Uh, new vehicles. Okay. East Acre Recreational Vehicles, 10 Cape Road, Imperial Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, 10 Uxbridge Road, Imperial Ford, 8 Uxbridge Road, Imperial Chevrolet, 20 Uxbridge Road, Me and Sprinter, 20 Uxbridge Road, Truck and Trailer World, LLC, 123 <coughs> Uxbridge Road, Nipmunk Marine and Auto, Inc., 44 Uxbridge Road, Vehicle Class 2, Brian's Tire and Brake, 28 Hastings Street, Certified Sales, 19 Uxbridge Road, Ron Chapney's Used Cars, 154 Uxbridge Road, Copart of Connecticut, 82 Cape Road, Native Automotive, 64 Milford Street, there's a misplaced comma here, I'm just going to strike it out. Richie's Drive Line, 1 Kingsley Lane, Sutfall Auto Sales, 20 Cape Road. Hawkers Peddlers Transient Vendors. Larry Joe, Larry Joe's New England Fire Pit, 30 Cape Road Parking Lot. s &C Flowers, 1 Cape Road Parking Lot. Lodging House, uh, Mark L. Scott, Executive Manor Lodging House, 10 Main Street. Whew. All right. Second. Okay, so I have a couple of discussion points. Um, let's see, where was it? Okay, the first one I have is, um, I'm just curious, so the, there's one in here for uh, A&Z Golden Corporation, doing business as DB Mart. That's the one right downtown, right at the, at the intersection, right? Mm -hmm. So that, I have to be honest, I get more comments that that place just looks like a disaster. It does, it looks horrible in the middle of this town. And I'm just, I'm just curious if there's, uh, if there's any, any bylaws that regulate, you know, the, the quality of what it should look like or what have you. I mean, it just, I think it looks terrible. It does look terrible. I agree. I mean, I, I almost want to not even, I almost want to take it out of here just so we can have a conversation with the guy, whether we can or we can't. <clears throat> Which one are you on? So we've just now, I've just read through, and lucky you, mm -hmm. you I just read through all of the licenses, all the whole section. So we've okay. made the motion, for a second, and now we're just going into discussion on it. All right. All right. So what we're talking about, Mark, is, is it, uh, DB Mart on the corner oh. of... Um, do, do you, do, what's, what's your opinion on that? Is, that? is that out of line? I think it's a bit extreme for what it is you want to accomplish. I think you want to be able to allow them to continue to do business in the town for multiple reasons, and you could also invite them to have a conversation without holding up the process. Well, I'd like to potentially do that because I've had a lot of people, a yeah. lot of people complain to me We could reach about. out and invite them to a future meeting and ask them, or we could even meet with them offline. I think offline's yes. fine. Mm -hmm. And I'd be willing to do that myself if it, the, if it doesn't work for the other two guys' schedules or what have you. Okay. Okay, good. All right, uh, so the other one I had was, uh, just interested here, it's, it says automatic, amu I understand we had an automatic amusements, um, one that we had to have as a separate license item. That's I for remember. event, one-time event. This is an annual license for that business to have automatic right. amusements. Right, right, so it's spelled out here though, so that leads me to believe that it's something that if it's not specified, they couldn't do. Correct, because there's a separate fee for every device. Right. Right, okay. Yep. So I get that because I know we talked about that. I didn't realize that we had such a thing for pool tables as well. Is that mm -hmm. true? Yeah? Okay, so it's, it's so much per pool table, is that mm -hmm. right? Okay, all right. Okay, and then um, 
I presume there's nothing new on the uh, adult entertainment front. I mean, that's just, uh, there's nothing new there. That's just the normal annual renewal, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. <clears throat> what about the um, Ron Champneys used cars? Is that the one we received the communication on today? Yes. Yes. Uh, no. That was the the last day. week yes. when I emailed your packet to you. Correct. So I had talked to Linda about that, um, and she does have an agreement with, with, uh, is that the same one? Yeah. Um, to pay those, those back taxes and by the end of January. And so I thought what we could do is instead of not authorizing the license, uh, we could potentially revoke it if those taxes aren't taken care of and we have the statutory right to do that I believe so yes mm -hmm. so that's what's a, the process yes what's the process to do that I'm just curious what the process is I have no idea about well, revoking the license what the process would be well the, the state law says that or the, the town bylaw says you have the right to revoke a license right. if payments are back taxes are due Good. Okay. As long as we have the yep. So I'm I'm fine with that. Okay. Okay. But now there was another one though, right? Where there was an issue with. We received an anonymous letter about. Isn't it right there? In front oh of you? right. Yeah. Um, well, that is more about. Let's see. The class two licenses for. Auto dealers. Did you get a response from? Yeah, I, I talked to the building inspector. He said that he will go out and take a look, but when he reviewed all the businesses, he didn't have an issue with any of them, but he will, he will specifically look at um, the one on Cape Road. Mm -hmm. There was another, the other comment was for a business on Milford Street, and the building inspector didn't believe that that was in the purview of. Yeah, that might be more of a, a state RMV issue. issue. That should be well, what was um, there was concern about the uh, native auto sales. Is that was that the one? Yeah. Oh, yes. okay, okay, okay. No, I got you. All right. All right. So, um, in respect to the concerns that were noted on this anonymous letter, um, would it be the same process if we um, if we felt that they were concerned, they weren't addressed, we could revoke. Uh, or suspend their license on that yes plus plus the motion was made pending departmental approval so if the building inspector comes back and has an issue then I won't issue the license okay mm -hmm. okay so I, I would like um, specific communication after he said thumbs up or thumbs down to let us know specifically what he said rather than silence on it if it's okay does that make sense mm -hmm. say that again so in other words um, if it's okay you might be tempted to say okay well there's nothing to tell you tell so we wouldn't get any communication oh, oh, I'm oh, saying gotcha. thumbs up or Either thumbs way. down I'd like to know yep. yeah yeah because we may the, the the person may come back and ask what happened and I don't want to say well I assume right right got it any others no, I, I would just, just, just because we're on this topic, I'd like to just generally say that I, I usually, I'm, I'm kind of disappointed when we get anonymous correspondence because I, I just feel like that's a way to dump a problem on our lap, expect us to solve it without any help from the person that cares about it. So I, I really hope that in the future that people, you know, come out and say when they got an issue, say who they are, make the point, and, uh, and help solve the problem. I make a note on, yeah. on this, on the Hawker's Peddler's license. It should be 30-1 Cape Road, not 30. Which one where? I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Hawker's Peddler's. It should be 30-1. Okay. So I'll just change it here. The license says 30-1. 30-1. Okay. Okay. Okay, that's all I have for input here. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 I am going to abstain from uh, one of these, though, which will be the showtime. I'll abstain from the showtime. Well, the motion was made for the whole thing. Right? Mm. The motion was made for the whole. So are you abstaining from the whole motion? Um, okay, doesn't matter. It still passes. So. so you don't, yes or no, abstaining? 
Well, I, well, there's only one that I want to abstain from. The rest I agree to. So whoever you do that, if I need to abstain from all of them, or I'm not going to make Rich reword the entire motion. And, uh, <laughs> come on. <laughs> yeah. Whoever you, whoever you put it in there, Diane and Palmer. So, are you, so are you abstaining from the entire motion? However, however it works, because I want to abstain from that one. So you're going to abstain from abstain. time. Okay. That's fine. It doesn't matter either way. Seven fifteen, right on the dot. Public hearing. I don't know what the right way to put this on I've here is, it. but I just I've okay, fine. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so ready for the mm -hmm. okay. I move to open the public hearing for the annual general on-premises all alcoholic beverages license for Southwick Wild Animal Farm, Inc., doing business as Southwick, as Southwick Street. Is that right? Did I say Southwick Street? Doing business as Southwick, yeah. <laughs> doing business as Southwick's New name? Zoo. Zoo. Okay. Southwick's, yeah, Southwick's. Mm -hmm. Is that accurate? On Southwick Street. <laughs> okay, I don't think we have to specify the street. I think that's good enough. Okay. You so right now, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's all right. that's what I call executive burnout. You get too much going on at once. Okay, so the last time I, you want me to read this, I right, would from the paper? It. Okay, now uh, just the show one. me where it is. Yeah. Red star. Thank you. It goes up at the top. Of course it does. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Starts at the bottom. Goes up at the top. Okay. Legal notice, a notice of public hearing, Town of Menden, the Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing in the Upper Town Hall, 20 Main Street, Menden, Mass, on the 14th day of the month of December 2015 at 7.15 p.m. to consider the application for an annual general on-premises all-alcoholic beverages license for Southwick Wild Animal Farm, Inc., doing business as Southwick Zoo, 5 Southwick Street, Menden, Mass, 01756, under Mass General Law, Chapter 138, Section 12, all interested parties will be given an opportunity to be heard. Second. Okay. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Public hearing is open. Uh, do we want the applicants to come up and speak? Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hello. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Great. Good. So what's your plan? <laughs> the, the same plan hey, can you vote now? This, yeah, the same plan we had before, actually. Oh. We're just reapplying for the same license that we already. That we did rescind. Right. right. Okay, so just, you know what, maybe it makes sense. To, let me just summarize what I think sure. happened before and what I think you're doing, right, to make sure we get it right, right. So you originally, applied for a, a permanent license and the reason would be because you had a, su a sufficient number of events that it was labor intensive to go back and forth back and forth which makes sense right, right. to, we to were do getting them individuals. yeah you get individuals each time right yep. okay then because we couldn't give you a temporary one while a permanent one right. was actively being sought you rescinded it so that you could get through your busy period, mm -hmm. and now you're in your slow period, and now you, you want to get it done so you're ready for next year. Do I get that right? Correct. Correct. Okay, good. All right. Unless there's any new, I mean, we talked about this before, unless there's any new information, I really don't have any questions. It's all I don't know if anybody here does. Are there are questions in the audience. Yes, just state your name and, and street. Yep. Do you want to come up just so people at home will hear your question? Um, Joe Conley, 57 West Island Street. Um, Here. Across from it's a, just send it, grab it. Kim, want to give it a yeah. speak in the microphone? I need to understand, um, because I have questions, what does this permit allow them to do? Because I have yeah, visions yeah. of different stuff, and I just wanted to define what it is. Is it going to be for specific events? Because I've heard weddings and banquets and corporate events or is it going to be for the general public to come in mom and dad and the family go have beer and walk around see animals no. No. bring in because they are allowed to bring in um, coolers and stuff like that and I just wanted to define if you could define 
what the permit involves. Yep. I will be satisfied. Okay, well, <laughs> uh, the permit is exactly for events that are taking place at the zoo that are, that are not for the general public, but for specific corporate outings, weddings, somebody comes in and, and <clears throat> um, wants to have. We don't have any facility in the zoo that serves alcoholic beverages to the general public. Um, if we did, it would be a contained area anyway. And it just wouldn't be open to anybody to go in and have. And depending oh. on the size of the event, does the bylaw say or does the town require additional assistance in any way to ensure once they leave the premises that the neighborhood would be safe? Well, we don't to have tactfully say that. Sure, I, I, I th you know, we don't have a specific restriction on on the license as it is. I don't think we do that with any other restaurant or, mm -hmm. or bar that is existing in town. So, um, knowing how Southwick's operates, at any event that I've seen there with alcohol, they have had a detail officer. As I understand it right now, the intention is to just keep doing what you're doing. Exactly. But yeah. just without having to come to us every time. Exactly. So for you, it I would be no aware. different than I was what they're doing now. Of, yeah. Any of it. And that's what surprised me. Yeah. And if you, you want, that's good because well, well well it was and it wasn't. It was like, well, why didn't they just ask? Or why didn't they just tell me? Because I'm live right across and we talk all the time so it was sort of I was taken back by it I just uh, ask you what yeah what? as to I didn't realize they were already serving alcohol up there as, they, they wouldn't need to well, ask I know you. that I know that because I've learned through the bylaws and all that fun stuff it's just the traffic does increase and it was a little bit heavier at t different times and I just chalked it up to people getting lost and stuff. Do you understand what I'm oh, saying? At yeah. night? Mo yeah, because most of our events are at night. At night, exactly. Mm -hmm. But we live in the woods and we hear, I mean, I can hear a car at the top of Southwick coming down toward mine. And it was like, wow, you know, it's a little bit more than normal, but I thought nothing of it. But now it's the picture okay. becomes, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So. Um, sure. That I was all I had. Okay. Well, it, it, it may have been confusing because we did apply and go through the same process last June. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then we had to rescind because of the way yeah, the and law I, was written. And I'm fine with it. I, I love you guys and everything else. I just thought it was an open dialogue. Okay. Anything else? So just to uh, clarify, so now I understand what what uh, Southwick is trying to do and it'll just be again for anybody around the abutters or whatever it's gonna be the same as it is now to them really because mm -hmm. your plan is to keep doing what you're doing now just not to have to come to us every time you have an event right exactly. okay but technically they could do more right I mean it with with the with the license we're giving them theoretically they, they could, could decide to expand to having beer in there refreshment right. stands right theoretically they could. no because it's limited to the patio area that's right. just their we premises are okay, described good. all right yeah we would have to reapply wouldn't we change to, of, to, to add on it would be a change whatever. of premises yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah 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 i mean because i mean i would never have any concern with with you good folks but you know never, never know what happens in the future right somebody else takes it. but then again we have to renew licenses when we do that correct right so yeah. doesn't matter yeah okay i have one question sure the hours of operation for the zoo are 10 to 5. 10 to 5. But we, when we do an evening event, sometimes they go to 10 or 11. So do you require additional permits for after hours? Oh, this, well, the no. zoo doesn't the zoo stay, stay open. open. No. But no, the, the it's, it's just that so the license you're applying for is... Mm -mm. It's just that the tent area. What's what's the time frame? I know there was a time frame. It would be frame. what everybody else has. I'm not sure. Clarify. One o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I think this. I think the standard license is to yeah. one a.m. I'm pretty okay, sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We don't go. <laughs> As you say, I'm here right now. But it's just for the tent area. It would be on the other documents. Okay. 
Yeah, so you're not going to, it's not just free for all 24 7, you know. <laughs> the peacocks have to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that. I understand that elephant you guys have is quite a lush, though. So you can move from All right. Okay. So, no other questions. Nope. Okay. So then I uh, let's see. I move to close the public hearing for the annual general on-premises all alcoholic beverages license for Southwick Wild Animal Farm Inc. Doing business as Southwick's Zoo. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay, so we'll go right on to the, the motion to grant, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I move to grant an annual general on-premises all-alcoholic beverages license for Southwick Wild Animal Farm, Inc., doing business at Southwick's Zoo, pending departmental approval. There are no, sco there are no schools or churches within 500 foot of the proposed licensed premises. Now, isn't that, doesn't that already, that's already in the, the, the bylaw, right? Well, I had to, the applicant had to get a butters list, and the butters list had to show that there was no churches or schools within 500 feet. So that's okay. just confirmed. All right. I just wouldn't think it would need to be in the motion, but that's fine. Um, okay, so I've made the motion. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain? Oh, okay. That's set. Thank you. On to the state. <laughs> Yeah, right. The amount? Technically, you don't have to abstain, though. Right? Well, I was part of the oh, process. Okay. Probably best. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got by all that, and now we need to get Mr. Glided out again now. Oh, he wants to stay. Are we on? I think um, we're gonna wait to the very last. <laughs> yeah, we should move the, you know what? Let, let's reconvene to have that <laughs> item after executive session. We can push to the next meeting. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we can go to that. Is there no six D? Is it? Am I missing something? Okay, so not six D. Thank you. And then E now. You can take them in any order you'd like. Thank you. Okay, I'm Good just night. not. I'm just not seeing six. C. Six C on my. Directly no, under six, the last, the lodging house, the last thing you well. No, sorry, six D. It says not applicable. Do we have no six D? There's no vote for it. Just look on the east here. Six. Okay. What are you looking? Third page, Rich. He only has motion, so we only. No, okay. that has I didn't. Have okay. Got it. All right. Six E. Huh? Six E. I see it now. Yeah. Yep. I don't care which one we do. I just we're confused. I didn't know what we. We were. can go to E. E. Okay. Yeah. All right. So if we go to E, then I move to point Michael Go Dot Go Goddard. <laughs> 23 wood. I call him that all the time when I call him, so I get confused. Yeah. <laughs> I usually call him Miguel Godard. <laughs> so, so I moved to a point. Michael Goddard, 32 Wood Drive, Lynn Roberts, 65 Washington Street, and Lonnie Tinio, 13 North F, to the Local Historic District Study Committee. Second. Discussion? Okay, is this a committee that exists already? Mm hmm. And does it have no one on it? So we voted. Did we vote it into existence? And we I don't did remember that. We voted into existence. Yes. Whew. Okay. All right. And does that fill it up? Do we vote it for three people? Mm -mm. It's three to seven. Three to seven. Oh, okay. Variable. Okay. Three that are willing to play. So. Okay. Okay. Good. Further discussion? No, I'm good. All okay. in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> um, okay, C, sign estimated temporary increase to resident population statement for the ABCC. Which one? Do you have a motion for that? 6C? 6C. 
Okay, I see why I'm confused now. Was, was it, wasn't it supposed to be a, um, a, uh, a motion for that one? So the motion there, uh, but there's no signing place. That's what, Okay, I see what happened. Okay, it. yeah, no problem. I got it. Uh, I move that as of July 10th, 2016, there will be an estimated zero resident population increase due to temporary residency. Second. Discussion. I, I don't understand what that means. The ABCC, as part of their annual renewal, now wants a statement from the local licensing authorities estimating what the increase in population is in the summer months because some like on the cape their population increases but it's just during the summer so i called and i said what if there isn't any increase and they said you still need to fill, have the selectmen vote on it and sign the form so that's what you're doing and i checked okay, with so margaret and she said there's no increase in population in the summer so. right right okay so that so can i presume that the the intent there is that that impacts the number of alcoholic licenses mm -hmm. we're able to yes okay fine i got it okay good further discussion all in favor uh, aye, aye. Point. Ken O'Brien to uh, the board, uh, board of Assessors and Linda Hawks, Treasurer Collector to the Taxation Aid Committee. I move to appoint Linda Hawks, Treasurer Collector to the Taxation Aid Committee with a term to expire June 20, sorry, June 30th, 2018. <coughs> Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 I don't know how we could say no to that. We'd be voting against the Taxation Aid Committee, right? Because it's mandatory, right? Yep. It's funny that we even have to vote on it. Yeah. Okay. I move to appoint Ken O'Brien to the Taxation Aid Committee with a term to expire June 30th, 2016, pending his appointment as the Chairman of the Board of Assessors. Second. Discussion? That will probably take place tomorrow evening. Okay. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Okay. Leaves us with conduct quarterly financial review. Or old business A. Old business A. Review plan. Oh, yeah. We'll, we should do that first. Review plan for bond, parking well, and septic system for the proposed farm project. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. I need water again. Should be. Should be. Oh, it's not. It's Thank you, Gary. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. This just shows the five acres of, that are above the wetlands starting at the bottom end of Hopedale Street on up to North Ave. <coughs> and also on one side of the wall, right? Um, yeah. Uh, more on the right, other side of the right. wall. Right, right. It's all on this. The property is basically divided into two by a stone wall. And this is the uh, Hopedale Street field, if you will. <coughs> and the total area is um, 30 acres, not the... Yeah, the 41, 41. the 41 is an error because it doesn't take out the three houses that were sold a long time ago down the bottom of the hill. Okay, so so um, so I can simply cross out that 41 and put 30, you said? Yeah, it's... 29.6 or something, or 8 or something like that. All right. So what we're here for tonight is uh, to get your uh, blessing on this project um, officially, now that you have something to actually look at. And uh, the next step we want to do is submit this plan to the um, Conservation Commission. So your approval would be subject to conservation approval. And after that, 
we would like to start building the parking lot because it's kind of a, a good winter project. Uh, but I'm not sure what the procedure is to do that, and that's where you guys come in. What do we have to do to make that happen? <coughs> so the barn, could you explain a little further on what, what your idea is for the barn? The barn is going to replicate as close as um, architecturally possible with current building codes, um, the Cox property barn. Uh, primary differences would be that the ends would have a lot of glass in them because there's no, there would be no windows on the side, so we need as much light as we can get. Uh, an architect is waiting for this plan, which we just got a couple hours ago, so the architect will be uh, generating a plan, again, for your approval, but uh, <clears throat> the uh, lower level on the, as you're facing it from North Ave, on the right-hand side where that entry area is, we'll have three garage doors, one of which will be designated for use for the farmer um, and his equipment for the the guy who's whoever ends up taking care of the field, yeah, the, the agricultural area, which is about three acres. So is it, does it serve a public use in, in, and in what capacity, the barn itself? It's part the barn, of the, the barn will, um, host um, and be available for uh, functions um, you know the overall intent is for those things art and agriculture related but that's wide open so um, and uh, it's it's a three season project this is not going to be open in the winter time mm -hmm. um, so how would one go about wanting to use the barn that's in town the, they would, uh, they would um, just apply through me or the, the committee, the um, board of directors. Mm -hmm. And then what's the what's the um, requirements, if you will, or uh, or process of, of vetting through somebody being able to use it? Is it just because they're a taxpayer they get to use it? Um, I don't care if they pay taxes or not. Um, as long as they pay the the fee that is determined to cover the expenses of the uh, building. Okay, do you know what that fee is? I don't know what that is yet. We don't know what the expenses are going to be yet. Square, do you have an, is this an, is, I'm assuming this is just an estimate right now, what the square footage is going to be for the structure once you're... No, it's actually going to be a 40 by 60 um, structure. So will it be, um, I'm guessing it's open on the inside like a meeting space? As open as possible, given we have to have bathrooms there. Everything, all else will be open. Mm -hmm. I think there's one thing that, that maybe I'm wrong, but that we should address first, which is you know, determining the language of, a, of, there's been discussion of signing a long-term lease with the town for this project to happen and be on the, that property. And I think, in my mind, I'd like to, do that first. I would like to have that in place before we go and spend a considerable amount of money here. Right. I mean, just just to get to the parking area and the, the excavation, the septic system, the foundation. That's that's approaching a two hundred thousand dollar expense right there. I, I think the other question that I have, in all fairness to uh, the taxpayers, is is that the taxpayers haven't had the opportunity to even decide if they want to see this put on the on this land. Um, well, that's my other question. Does this require a town vote? Uh, in my opinion, I think it should. Um, you know, you know, for us to just sit here as a board, I mean, I... Yeah, I'm not, you know, I'm not concerned about well, that. I think and, and, you potentially know. that lease would need a vote. Yeah. I mean, just I... Just like I, we did with the... Uh, I'll, I'll be honest know. with you guys. I would not feel comfortable with going forward with anything unless it goes in front of the town. I wouldn't. Whether it's legally obligatory or not. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I hear a couple of things and I just want to make sure. So the entity that would be signing the lease with the town would be who? Shirley Jane Smith Agricultural and Art Center. Okay. So Inc. And final one, it's going to be a 501. Yeah, 501 yes. And you already have sort of, so see, that's number that's a, one. Which that's is working out terms of mm -hmm. how it would be used once it's constructed. 
um, but approval for the, I, I think you have to have all these pegs in place That's and right. then bring it in May because um, as, assuming everything is yes, as we're saying, and it's going along is fine. Um, I think you have to have that piece of it done as well to protect the town's interest. Taxpayers are going to want to know what the use is going to be and how they $1 lease or whatever it is. Go ahead. Sorry, Diane. Good luck. Yes, <laughs> go ahead. Um, would it, wouldn't it have to be a public water supply, too, if, if there were going to be functions there? And The well, which isn't shown here, is actually on the other side of the stone wall. Um, they didn't have time to put that on the plan today. But it will meet all the requirements for a public water supply. We are not going to go through the state permitting process um, but because it's just not necessary. But it will meet all the requirements. Why wouldn't it have to go through the state? If you were going to actually use it for public water usage, it would have to go through. There's no reason for you that you would ever do that. But yeah. Why not? Well, no, there's, a there's a specific requirement, and it's dictated by the amount of people that use it over a certain amount of period. Mm -hmm. So if you were anticipating that the structure was going to serve greater than 25 people once a week, um, and I'm, I'm not, don't quote me on the requirement, but I, I think it's somewhere around that. I, I have left all that up to Shea Engineering, and he's saying that we don't need to worry about that. So. I, I, you know what, and, and frankly, it, it, it doesn't matter. If, he, if it's it built be. physically to accommodate it, right. then if we find out at any time that it needs to be right. that, then we that, go get right. it. That's right. Exactly. Well, actually, it wouldn't, it would... It wouldn't be us that would go get it. It would be the Sherman. Oh, I get it. Yeah, yeah but in that in that case, I think that that would have to be the hardest thing. Very specified clearly um, in in the lease agreement or somewhere. There has to be legal lease that, that requires that. I'm just saying we have to put. You, a, you certainly have put to, it in there. You have to put it. There has to be a provision that that this is nothing against you. It's just this is just legal lease at that point of. You know, if there's a requirement, there's going to be a responsibility to get it done. Yeah, it's my understanding that it's not required um, under the projected use. So, but well, you just want to specify hard. it's 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 on the the lease the lease e to do it if it needs to be done. That's that's what correct. Saying. That's correct. Yeah, that's well, correct. The board and engineer could answer that for you. Yeah, that's right. the hardest part is is finding a location as. May, may some of you may know to, to actually put a well anywhere in Menden mm. that meets the uh, dimensional requirements, you know, the, the setback requirements, I should say, for our public for water supply. Yeah, that has good. been determined that we have. So good. So one one thing I'd like to do, I just want to replay what I think the whole story is here to make sure I get the whole of what I'm looking at here. So if I understand the whole story correctly, right? If we wind the clock back, originally the Shirley Jean Smith. 5013C was meant to put some kind of dedicated facility for her at the Cox Pond, which is now burned down, right? Right. Okay, so it burns down, and you've got to find somewhere new to do it, and you've chosen here, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, now, and here is also the same place that you two ladies wanted to do the community farming or Vegetable. I'm not sure exactly yep. the right yep. phrasing. Mm -hmm. It's all okay. coming together in the same place. Okay, so I get okay, so I got that. Now there was some discussion around what the um, what the infrastructure had to be to support this community farming thing and who built it and paid for it. Can I presume that whatever Mr. Smith and his 5013C are doing is completely mutually exclusive to that? Yes, the farmer will get use of the well. And get used to, so it's not exclusive, it's, it's they're, they're using some of the infrastructure. They're, they're, sh they're, share, they're sharing the use of the well okay. and the parking, and lot. The parking, the parking lot, lot and the, a portion of the barn for um, supplies okay. and for storing vegetables. Okay, so this is symbiotic then. So, yes. but, but hypothetically speaking, if you recall what we discussed this in the past, um, the well had to go in regardless. So let's just say that right. If the barn doesn't, the barn have, doesn't get approved by well. the taxpayers, then the well will still be required, and the well would it would still be positioned wherever they placed it on the drawings. Oh, sure, I get that. Yeah, okay, yeah, I get that. Okay, no, I just I wanted to just replay that be, to, to understand the totality of what's happening here and what I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. And you also need the parking area. Yep, right. Um, sure. You wouldn't need quite as big as the one that we so, have here, but you still would need one. So if the farmer had a CSA and people wanted to drive up and get their produce, it would be 
beneficial to have a partner. Okay, so from a legal oh, perspective, yeah. this gets a little stickier, right? Because now, now the um, and I'm, I'm not trying to poop anything. I'm just mm -hmm. thinking out loud here, right? So now the farmer needs to engage in some kind of agreement with the 5013C for use of the, that infrastructure, right? No, with the town, theoretically. The town. Like, can we just back up? Uh, stay Ooh. here. Stay right there. Do we have to go to a the earlier spot first, which is right. this land and the purpose of the land that the board has, right? You can only use it for agricultural or open, open space or space. library. So yeah. That's number one. And then you have to decide if these are the projects that you want to place onto that mm -hmm. land. And there's different projects here. One is a farm, one is the art center. Sure. And then there's, do you want it to look like this? And if that's the case, yep. then everyone votes yes on that in May, and then there's the individual agreements that get structured for each of the different entities that then do their things on right. this piece of land. Well, I didn't think I had to go all the way back to the Book of Genesis, because if we did, we'd say, okay, well, this is the place a library was supposed to go, right? A taxpayer may be wondering why we're not considering, let's say, sports fields on this piece of land instead of a farm, and I think it's important to clarify. Yeah, and the reason we're not is because Gannett, Mr. Gannett, Correct. donated it for the library right now is agreeing to let us do this stuff with it right right we had to change the deed restriction which we did and we went right. to town meeting and that's all done yeah. and now the select board is responsible for this property not the library trustees thanks for that Kim okay oh. so um, so anyway so I guess the I guess the one uh, of the things you could consider yeah. so that we could actually get this thing rolling this next spring is since the parking lot and the well are both going to be utilized for the farming endeavor, let us do that. I guess we're taking a gamble in doing that because uh, if we don't get the town approval for the rest of the project, then we've wasted a lot of money. But well, well, and we're gambling on the size, right? Because theoretically, if you didn't have that pro that the barn in <coughs> what you want to do, the farmer might not need one as big as I'm sure you're proposing, right? We've got well, 49 vehicles well, there now, but he we, wouldn't need we that. Take a s step back. Okay. The far we could theoretically get a farmer in there and say you're on your own, and he could get permission to just haul in a couple barrels of water every week and do that kind of thing. So I think the farming portion, this benefits the farming portion 100 percent. But I think we can still have a farmer there even without it. But oh, okay, yeah, but that, that's so that's the. But the well is the, well's the well is like the most critical point, though. Oh, so, so no, no, I get, I get, I get that, but that's not what we were just talking about. What we we're just saying is, if you, 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 I heard you say you'd like to. It's a good winter project to put mm -hmm. the parking area in, right? Well, it gets it done yeah. before the farmer would go in the other spring and do his end. Right. It's, okay. You know, we now, could be we he, could be ready for him this so year instead of waiting yet another. What this is like the fourth year that we've. Right, been fooling around with this thing. Okay, so I, and I don't want to lose oh, my train of thought. Hold on, I can't. No, wait a minute. I want, don't want to lose my train of thought yet. <laughs> so what I'm trying to say is very simple: that the size of that parking area might not be as big if the if your bond doesn't go in, or if it's just or or unnecessary, right? Well, so we not only is the given, deer roll given, the, 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 given the soils up there, he would absolutely need a staging area to work. But not probably 49 vehicles. No, no. So all I'm saying is there's risk in two places. There's the risk that you spend money on it and you don't get right. the bond built, and there's a risk that we got a bigger parking lot than we need for what goes there. That, that's all I was trying now to say. you could always use the parking lot. That's not a... Well, I mean, I guess to, to Kim's point, when you go back to town meeting, what we voted on was the deed restriction change to agricultural use, but the town hasn't voted on having a farmer go down there and use the land. Well, and, yeah. well see, at the last town meeting, what we did we was did we that. voted that we gave the select board the control um, of the property, which included agricultural use. And I've been working with town council because last time I was here, we had a lease that you looked at and you said, go back to town council. You give us all the corrections, you know. That's right. so, so we have, we're actually going with a license that we would um, have with the farmer. And it would be for like five years, and it's pretty much done. Um, we just had to, to add dates before we um, pass it by you. Um, so let me, let me ask you, all right, so I get that. Okay, thanks, and thanks for bringing me back up to speed because a lot goes on, but uh, so, and now I remember that. Yeah. If the barn is not, um, if, the, if the barn is rejected uh, by the taxpayers, um, Due to the topography of the land, because it slopes pretty dramatically down Hopedale Street, um, obviously a farmer uh, might have more benefit to use the land up top. Um, so in that case, 
um, they might propose to put the parking lot elsewhere. Um, there isn't any other place. No, the, 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 I this, think this, this is pretty much what we had already, even before yeah. the Cox Barn burned down and we considered this, this is really where we were considering the best farming use of the land would be anyways. Okay, so so I guess what I was trying to get at is would the farmer, would there be benefit for the farmer to be able to utilize? The farm where the parking lot is? Yeah, or, yeah up there or where the bar, and where the barn is and yeah, stuff like that. Not really because we've got the other acreage on the other side of the wall too that, that, that could be used someday if this turns out to be successful. There's a yeah. lot more land up yeah. uh, Don't get me wrong, I'm just asking the questions. Oh, so, so let me ask it a different way. Would there be, um, could the farmer farm that land up there? Um, where the barn is going to go and where the parking lot's going to go. Oh, certainly. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. Sure. Okay. And, but, sorry, we're done. Yep. Does the license for the farmer, um, did, did we pass something that limits the licenses to only one? Does the board, of, the board of Selectmen now has the authority in order to authorize what agricultural use this property has? Mm -hmm. And so f you would assume farming and the license for the farmer is in that. Um, is this use of this barn outside of agricultural use, or is it still agricultural use? It's it's it is um, included in the deed as agricultural use, like um, buildings that support the agriculture. And did we limit the number of licenses or purposes that the board of selectmen could approve for this site? Um, I don't think so. But town council said that uh, a license doesn't require a town meeting vote. But he said that we should leave it that the um, farmer wouldn't be necessarily using the barn and then if the barn is built then the farmer would have a lease with um, I guess the Shirley Smith you know um, organization yeah. so, so 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 I was kind of thinking the same direction you were which is which is that um, okay well maybe not the same direction <laughs> it's my own direction then whatever no no <laughs> yes uh, uh, thinking uh, what, the same thing. what I'm what I'm saying is is that um, I, I think I would disagree a little bit with um, Selectman Burke in that um, that if we have the ability to vote for this um, without going to the town, I think we should. Be, why? Because the town's already voted to give us control and, and decision making on these type of uses. I find it extremely difficult to believe that um, that the town would not like this use of this property. Extremely difficult. And um, and to wait for wait only causes delay that we could be moving forward. So, my opinion would be. So so I would disagree with Selectman Schofield, and I would say that we're entering into a 99-year lease um, for a nonprofit. That um, you know, I hope that I get to live another 99 years, but uh, unfortunately, I won't. So um, this is going to be passed on to. Other members of a nonprofit. Keep disagreeing with me. You might die tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you threatening me? So, anyways, uh, the uh, um, I would say that I would not feel comfortable without putting this in front of the town that we're going to be entering into a 99-year lease and there's a structure on property that technically we've talked about agricultural use. I love the concept. I loved your mother. I think it's a great idea. I believe in the nonprofit. I just think that. Um, it really needs to go in front of the taxpayers. So, so, wait a minute, because I'll get to Gene in one second, but uh, at the meeting w that we were authorized to sign or to control what happens here, I believe there was discussion about the potential to have this barn and mm -hmm. these types of activities. Is that correct, Ann? Didn't we talk about a barn potential at that time? Possibly. I think probably though, in terms of the barn, you you might want to go to town meeting for that. Mm -hmm. But I think all the other things you don't need to. You know, I mean, like you don't need the parking, the well, and that, and the farmer maybe. Right. I don't know, Kim. What's Jean, this? Hold on, Jean had a question. I just wondered because I forget. Was the restriction specific to agricultural usage? Yes. And yes. Well, and how can an arts center? be considered agricultural or, or using a building for functions that are non-agricultural. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think so we have to go I'll, back to town meeting and that, to open that window anyway. It's an agricultural and art center is the full name. Um, there are many uh, 
like fiber art, for instance, it utilizes um, uh, wool to uh, create artwork. But if someone wanted um, to have so, a wedding so there, would you allow that? Never, open never, never, never crossed my mind. It's really well, not suitable for. You said whoever wanted to yeah, well. <laughs> rent it. Well, Kim. Thank you. <laughs> Mike, uh, I have some other issues, um, and I, I do think it needs to go before the taxpayers, but I have some issues with the thoughts of. I'm, I'm happy with the project. I love the concept. Chris, you referenced the 99 year lease. I mean, all of these are hypotheticals at this point. None of this has been determined. It could be a one year lease, it could be a 30 year mm -hmm. lease, it could be a. Well, that's, that was what was requested. Right. I agree. Um, but then there's also, and no offense, why this project and this thing on the town's land? I mean, don't we have an obligation to put it up to the public to decide what gets put there? I mean, now, again, I'm assuming the funding is all private, so potentially no. But again, I think there's costs involved that are the towns that have to be decided on. Like what? Uh, we'll just think about the general wear and tear on the use of the land that belongs to the town. There's a value to that. Possibly some liability. I, I'd like to find out if there's I any mean, liability. Maybe not just the structure, but I mean, there's. it's more complicated than just... Saying okay, so I want to be crystal clear while we're on this topic right now. In no way, shape, or form am I saying that if we don't already have the statutory right to make a decision that we shouldn't go to the people. Okay, I did not say that, did not imply that, don't want people to think that. Mm -hmm. All I said is that if we already have been voted the ability to make the decision, I don't, I, I'm completely comfortable making that decision. But on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm like a 6. So I am not. strongly about it. If you're a 10 against, then I'm okay with that. Yeah. Just in the same regard that we have to go out to RFP potentially for a farmer, why wouldn't we go out to RFP for a, a building or a project on that site that's going to be generating some type of fee? I mean, there, we have to look at this further. Before well, we I, I think the only, re the only argument against that is uh, I would find it hard to believe that somebody's going to present something to the town that is more high-minded than honoring Shirley Smith, who worked her butt off for this town. And I have, and I have a, 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 quest, a question just to consider. Since the Cox building burnt down, that the intent was, my understanding, the intent was that was going to be for the use of the Menden citizens. Why can't this just be a replacement for that? We never actually so it never was adopted no. the barn. It never no. was no. decided that it was going to be a town. No, no, the, no. Same, the same type of meeting would have taken place. Yeah, okay. before we got yeah. to it. That's right. I, I, I didn't know how far that concept had Listen, gotten. Listen, I, I don't know if you understand that this is like a $550,000 project that we are very generously being given. And this is not going to make any money. When I talk about a fee, I talk about covering janitorial expenses, I think, um, no, I heating think. and lights, that kind of thing. Not even heating, because there isn't going to be any heat. We understand the generosity yeah. of the project. That's not the question. The problem is it's not our land mm -hmm. to use, theoretically. So there's a process in place that we need to it follow. It is if that's what the vote said. Well, agricultural, yes. So All we right. just need to make sure that we are doing the process correctly so this project gets done correctly. That's all I'm saying. So that way, when we get down to the finish line, We've done all the things we need to do to make sure it goes forward. All right. So the question, going back, the question was, can they go forward and do the parking lot? Now, in my well, opinion, and the well, and well, and the well. And the well. okay, parking both lot. of those things are, are things that that say that the project gets, you know, we decide we're not going to do the barn and, you know, the whole other, everything else isn't going to happen. But we we still all agreed that, the farming aspect is something we'd like to see happen. So we're still going to need a parking lot, and we're still going to need a well. I, I would agree with that, um, that we are going to need parking at some point. But to uh, Selectman Schoolfield's point, if by some chance the barn doesn't get accepted, then that parking ratio could go down. Now, as a taxpayer, if that's, that land could be used as agricultural and could be farmed, by a farmer, then I don't want them to have to go in there and redo it again. And it's a beautiful road. You wouldn't redo it again. Well, well, that's what I'm. Saying. Well, all right. So, but but bear with me for a second, Gary, because I'm not poo-pooing the idea. So don't think it that way. I'm I just know. thinking through. But as we're driving down North North Ave, 
I don't, you know, nobody wants to be taking a hard right and looking at the beautiful view and looking at a parking lot if it's just not going to be used as a parking lot. Well, it's also, it's not going to be a, a per, an impervious surface, right? What, what would the parking lot be made out of? It's going to be a, a gravel. gravel. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm just saying, you know, it's going to be much larger than what it would need to be if a farm, if the barn didn't get accepted mm -hmm. and a farmer could use more of that land for agricultural, then most likely that would be a smaller parking service. So I think the intention is the right intention. I just think we're moving at a thousand miles an hour here to try to get something in because of timing and everything else. I think that we're really what we need to do is make a determination, in my opinion, um, do you guys if you agree or disagree, uh, make a determination on um, if a barn's going to go there and if a barn's not going to, which I believe needs to go in front of the taxpayers, and then if that doesn't happen, then we can decide on what goes on with the parking. I just think we're rushing it. And I, we also need opinions on liability. I mean, this is a big piece of it because, you know, it, we're all in agreement now that the project is a great idea, but we may disagree on the terms of the lease and who's responsible for the property or what happens if the construction of it does some sort of, I mean, we need to make sure we're all protected That's on right. that piece of it. Um, I think if you like this idea and concept, in concept, then we could start moving towards working towards That's drafting right. up those things so we have yep. more concrete ways mm -hmm. to move forward. They might not be on the ground, but they will be protecting the parties involved. Mm -hmm. That seems like the next logical step. And maybe even a presentation of concept at town meeting or even in March. I mean, it's soon, but just to start getting a general information out to the public about the project. Well, it's very discouraging to have to wait yet another year to uh, continue this project, but if that's what you want, then that's fine. <coughs> um, I would address the issue of the length of the lease. It will be a 99-year lease or it won't be anything. I'm gonna just, we're just not going to spend that kind of money and not have that kind of assurance that it's going to last. Um, at this point, I'm pretty much ready to, uh, I'm, I'm very discouraged by what I'm hearing here tonight. I'd hope to come out of here with some sort of progress and I'm not seeing any. Well, it's, it's, not, it's not over yet. I, so, I can say that this has, we've been going on and on about this farm, you know, this agricultural use on this property. We've, we're going in a direction to use the, the property as a farm, regardless of whether there's a agricultural art center or not. Having a, a parking lot that's a little bigger than what might be expected, I don't feel like is going to, is a bad thing. You know, we could end up where it becomes a very popular location and they're going to need more parking. You Having could more that, parking you could is use for overflow for the school sometimes. I was thinking for so you've too. got a, there are. And if the barn doesn't get built and we do the parking lot in the well, the farmer could put up a temporary, like, you know, one of those shed in the box. He's going to need something to put, you know, equipment in and things. Mm -hmm. So there's going to need to be some kind of temporary structure until there is a barn. So, you, so, there. Sorry, you go ahead. so let me ask you a question on that because I mean those are all valid points and I can appreciate those um, the uh, um, liability piece um, that I brought up and, and Kim also brought up as well is we have to address that because now well, we're that, that's absolutely you're well, absolutely right about that I was under the impression that that would be covered under the town insurance yeah. and somebody here told me that that it would be and I don't remember who it was. So, the, the, the farmer is separate from the I recognize building, that. But the, yeah, they would have to have that. Right. No, I recognize that, but now what we're doing is we're opening up a parking lot for taxpayers to go and you or anybody to use, and there's going to be some, there's going to there's have to be some insurance on that. There's no doubt. Somebody falls on that property. Isn't this as, as town property? Aren't you already liable for anything that happens on it? We are. Um, and we will have an umbrella that will cover that, but we, I mean, we'll have to have coverage for special events. I mean, we will. I'm asking as a question. I don't know if there's going to be additional premium. I, I don't see it as an argument to do or not do something. Yeah, I mean, we're going to just, we will have, a, we need to make sure we come to terms on what it is. Mm -hmm. That's all. And actually, technically, once it's a parking lot, you're less likely to trip. <laughs> it's flat. No roots. Uh, uh, here's I'm a, just here's, asking a question. Here's a question yeah. for you, and you might like this. Is, can we uh, require some form of a chain or a gate? Would you would you like 
to see that if we do this. I mean, I well, think I would. I would actually like to see well, why a way to keep cars out for yeah, the time being. Yeah. What about getting the leases approved oh. first? Before what? No, 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 no. We're trying to. What we're trying to do is get the parking lot and the well. That's the only thing we're well, trying I understand, to do. But he doesn't want to construct it unless. No, he, he does. He does want he to construct it. He's going to take the risk. Yeah, I don't know. He just said he doesn't want to if it's going to be anything less than a 99 year well, lease. We can't guarantee that it's sitting here without actually. Well, all right. So to that point, so I'm, I'm going to go back to that. If it's if he's requesting a 99 year lease right now in order to construct that parking lot and do the well, then I then I would have to defer to taxpayers. If he's saying that he's going to do it in there because because I heard two things. If we have to do it anyways, that's what I heard. If we have to do it anyways, and we're going to do the well, then yeah, let's do it. But it's not good. the thing is is that the town would have to vote to either invest in that parking lot, or a farmer has to do it, or your um, 501c3 has to do it. Somebody has to do it. Somebody has to pay for that expense. Right. All right. So it comes down to, and what you're looking for, Gary, and I appreciate this, is he's looking for approval to do the barn and get his to get the language for his 99-year lease, which because now he has vested interest in getting that parking lot done and the well done. But I am not in, I, I am not willing to sign up for a 99-year lease without going to the tax base on the barn. I'm not. Now, if somebody wants where, to, that is where. Gary had said, he, you know, we're not going to get that solved right now, the, the lease. You, you know, we're not going to have the taxpayers vote on it until, or the voters vote on it until the spring. What he was saying was he'll, he was at, I don't know if this has changed your mind or not, but that you were willing to risk that part of it so he could at least start some of this project. That's what I thought I heard, too. Yeah, is that... Not at the risk of the barn not being approved. I've seen too many town meetings where one abutter can get all his friends together and show up at a meeting that nobody else shows up to because of the weather or because of whatever night, and it gets killed. So mm. I'm not gonna not gonna have Mr. Gannett spend two hundred thousand dollars and then not get you know the cherry on the uh, Sunday here. I mean, it's mm. which is the barn. Okay, I, I want to know definitively whether we already have the right to vote this with or without a vote to the, to the people amended, whether we're already been approved. I want to know that definitively, mm -hmm. okay? Because, I, again, I, you know, I, I just sometimes I think the, the pendulum swung too far here a little bit, okay? Menden has run footloose and fancy free with no process, no nothing for a long time. We know this, right? It was a huge problem. And we needed to get some, some structure in place, some process in place, some formality in place. And we've done that. And sometimes I think we've gone just a little bit too far over the other way. So I just, in something like this, I just find it really hard to believe that anybody in town would have a problem with dedicating something to this purpose, this high-minded purpose. And because of that, because of that, I, I, just, I would like to not see them have to wait another year to get started. And, and, and it sounds like to me you came in here hoping you could leave with permission to build, build the parking lot and put in a well. That's what you were looking for, right? With, the, right? with the caveat that the barn gets accepted and you're also approving the barn. Okay, that's, that, but that's not what I heard at the beginning of the meeting. At the beginning of the meeting, I heard you say specifically that no. you're willing to roll the dice on that. I'm changing that a little bit, I guess. So uh, if you okay, so you're changing it. So I don't know how we could agree to that. See, that now I'm tripped I'm up. Now I'm, see, if that's the case. I don't understand the problem with the barn. No, I, I don't know. Um, they want to look at a lease. I, how, how, can, how can we guarantee? How long is it going to take to put a lease together? A le I don't know, but. I, I, but maybe we have to do it. I don't know because I'd have I'd have trouble saying if we have if I, if the vote means I have to agree to at least I haven't seen. I, I don't think that would be too smart of me. And the whole idea of the 99 year lease was you know Kim came up with, which I was thrilled to hear about, at the first time I met with her about this project many many months ago, and now we're finally here, ready to do something. Um, I don't see that. So who, who would put that together? Who would be responsible for putting together a lease? Us? Well, it's your land. 
So it would be a lease that we create that would then be given to them with the parameters in it. But I mean, there's a likelihood that he may not agree to the parameters that the town sets. Okay, fine. So, so, so along with that first item, which is to find out whether we have the, the, the right or not to decide. Mm -hmm. Number two, see how quickly we can put together a, 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 what a lease would look like that we have something to talk about. Got it. Okay, you get that pregnant smile on your face like there's something more you want to say. No, understood. Okay, all right. Um, oh, Diane, sorry, Annie. Yep. Diane. Yeah. Uh, isn't another question whether we have to go out for an RFP? Yes. I mean, if, 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 if it's like any other, like the solar project, mm -hmm. we couldn't just tell someone that they could come in and lease the land. Yeah, I'd like and to know that. Too. I suppose I'd like to know that, too. Right. Yeah. It actually it sounds like that that is Don't. a piece I we're missing. Asked Don't. That question. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> no. I think the project is good. I think this project will get built. I we need to do it right is the issue. Um, uh, and didn't we just adopt this land or get it in the fall? Yes. It was at, no, you've uh, had this land. It was at for the March time. town meeting we voted we voted for the trustees to give it to the right. Support. So it's not as if we have been passing over the use of this project specifically on this piece of I'm just making sure. Right. This is the first time we've seen this. Yes, you're correct. I think we, what we really need to make sure is that whether or not all three of us wanted to do this specific project. Could we sign a lease without going out to bid for proposals? And I'm not sure that we could. Mm -hmm. uh, um, in terms of the license to the farmer, that doesn't need to go to town meeting. That's what town council said for the farmer to use the land. Oh, we get that part. Yeah. That's, okay. that's clear as a bell. Yep. Okay. So I think we're going to plan on sending that to you soon for you to look at, and then we can put it on your agenda for after Christmas. Oh, your RFP doesn't. You don't know what to include in it yet because you don't know if you're going to have a parking lot. You don't know if you're going to have a well for his use. So he doesn't know what he's bidding on. Mm -hmm. You're right. So, so, so if, pieces if, we need to shore up quickly. So I think what we need to do is I think we need to establish a list of to dos mm -hmm. in order to get we've this three. thing move forward. Yep, we've got three right there. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so and the, and the only other th so obviously in order to to get the um, the parking lot in the time frame you want, depending upon whether or not we you know how the answers to these questions come out, you know hopefully we we can get the answers to these in a timely fashion. I don't think we have to reinvent the wheel here. There's got to be a 99 year community lease out there somewhere. I'm, that we can right, that to call the town council to that's adapt. The piece that's Say it again. The, um, I'm used to seeing the land leases for 99 years, but they don't include the construction of a thing. Mm. So that's the piece that um, I'm going to work on. I would also. Um, All right, well, let's find out the answers to those and okay. yep. Hope try to maybe get some answers by the next meeting. That would be nice. It's not like we can't have those answers by in two weeks. Uh, with Christmas. Uh, that can you just go over what the, the 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 answers are that you're looking for? Just so yeah, I just you want to run understand. over those three yeah. action items. Or... Um, I'm looking to find out if we have the authority to sign the lease without going to town meeting. Um, can we do it without an RFP? Um, can we enter into an agreement without the RFP? Can we give them a 99-year lease? It's as far as I've typed so far. Of also, well, no, not can we give them a 99 year I, I'd like to see a template, a, a first draft. Now I'm wondering something. how long would it take to generate a document? Thank you. I think I'd also, uh, in order to give me some confidence level, um, I'd like to know what the restrictions are for use for the taxpayers or anybody else that wants to use the barn. Um, and uh, and, and uh, it would be nice to just try to understand. You don't have to give us a fee structure, Gary, but I would like to just understand what the process is going to be and who, who would be willing to be accepted. You know, meaning if somebody wants to, uh, if it's going to be restricted to the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts and 4-H and stuff like that, then you know people might have a different view on it but if you said 
um, that somebody wanted to host a barn dance or something like that, are they going to barn be? dance would be a great thing to have? Yeah, I'm just saying. I'm just you know I'm throwing out ideas here. You know I'm I'm, I'm just you know thinking out loud. But I, I would say. It would be nice to be able to see what the process is and who would be restricted. Well, you've just hit upon some. four of my hope. You have to be non-alcoholic. My hope, yeah, yeah, there wouldn't be any alcohol. That's, yeah. yeah. That's, if you consider that an absolute given. Is it going to be, but I guess what I'm saying, is it going to be weddings? Is it going to be, you know, is it going to be, and then, I, I'm just asking. I don't know. I, I, hey, people are going to ask questions. You want to exclude weddings, questions. exclude weddings. It's something I never, certainly never thought of. Oh, no, I'm not uh, going to exclude it. I would say uh, people uh, might want to use it as weddings. Can you, can you think of something that you wouldn't want to have there? I think you wrote a mission statement that we can we can look at and, and uh, we can help Gary refine that. But I would there's going to be a see, process. I would love to see the Boy Scouts use it. You know, where Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts can't use the um, public schools anymore, as, or at least there was a time they couldn't. This would be a great place for them to have events. Um, 4-H is something I really want to see blossom in the town of Menden, and they need a place to do that, and this is going to be a place for that. Sure, sure. Um, you know, art shows, craft shows, um, you know, the, the 4-H, you know, shows, that you know, canned good shows, whatever, you know, all that, anything that's related to those things. Um, okay. I just know that People will be interested. I mean, those are but, yeah, some no, of the I questions understand. I already if heard. I, if I lived uh, across the street, I would want to know. And, uh, you know, we want to be prepared for that. I just, I, just how much detail do you need for that, though? If there was a... If there's going to be restrictions on taxpayers using it and it's going on taxpayers' land, I think that folks are going to be interested in knowing that. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm not, you know, saying to be facetious. I'm just saying no, that. No, no. I, I just, know, I... I you know, I mean, people are going to want to know when when a structure goes on their land for 99 years if they're going to have what access there are they going to have to that? Well, you know, we had a uh, a theme here, if you will, with the art and agriculture, um, preferably, frankly, something that joins the two together, mm. um, but not necessarily. I mean, there is a financial uh, consideration here. We do have we're going to have bills to pay on this property. Right. Um, so whatever nominal fee I'm going to charge for those people to use that facility, um, you know, it needs to calculate out to pay those bills. Um, I do have donations coming in uh, on a monthly basis that will cover some of that. Uh, so that, you know, the fee will be minimal. Um, I think Jean brought up a good point that um, we have to follow the deed restriction, yeah. you know. We have yeah. to what? Follow the and deed restriction. It has to be, you know, like around agriculture, you know, that. So weddings wouldn't really fit into that. But no. so we'll need to come back. Mm -hmm. you know. What if two farmers get married? <laughs> I think the only other thing concern that I would have, and I wouldn't expect this to happen, but uh, a 501c3 happens and you're struggling getting the money raised to, to keep this thing afloat. Um, you know, the, let's just say that uh, the money dries up. And um, you move to California. Um, you know, at that point, what happens with the structure? Mm -hmm. You know, does a town just inherit it and take it over, and then, and, you know, well, take over the burden? That would be in the lease. Yeah. Agreement. Well, I'm just, I'm, I'm just yeah. brainstorming here. You know, that's all I'm doing is I'm brainstorming. Oh, that's, a, that's a legitimate concern, and I would expect that to be in the lease. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I would think that town council could come up with something. You know. Okay. Along those lines. Yeah. So, anyways, you asked for extra stuff. That's my extra stuff. So maybe by the next meeting, then. I think we should have a meeting before then, um, to, with town council. Maybe a sit down, sort of a workshop, work it through meeting about all of sort of the ideas and the angles. Um, early January, mm -hmm. if we could. I'll give them a heads up on the issue so we can come prepared. Yeah, so I mean, just so we can start, it's like uh, these are good concepts and they seem to be supported by the board without taking a vote at this point. But I mean, in order to really figure out what we're talking about here, I think we should do that. And that way, when we come before, we'll have a lot of these questions answered. We don't have to do it here. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Yeah. Very good. January would be good, <laughs> especially if we have something we've got to get on a, a warrant. Right. Um, yeah. In the meantime, I don't think there's any harm in taking this plan to the Conservation Commission. I don't think so. That would give us at least a head start in that direction. They're just looking at the at the issue. So yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. They'll issue an order of conditions that we would have to meet. So 
it'll th that can be done by the time we wrap up this other stuff actually so mm -hmm. all right okay. thanks for all your yeah. putting in it thanks so we can keep these yeah do you have an extra one thank you Okay, quarterly financial review. Oh, it's my nap time. <laughs> Can I say a couple things before we start the review? <laughs> I thought that was going to get sure. a better I Just first, I'd like to publicly commend uh, Kathy Schofield and Jane Lowell. Uh, they spent the weekend cleaning and decorating the town hall, and I think it looks really great. And I really thank them for that. Secondly, on behalf of previous boards of selectmen, of which I sat on one, uh, I could be offended by the footloose and fancy free because I think that we all, all the boards of selectmen, have tried very hard to, to maintain the town well. And, yeah, and I, I wasn't, I wasn't referencing just the board of selectmen, but we have to admit that uh, that there was. Def I, I would stand by what I said that there's definitely in the past been a, uh, a, a less formal adherence to process. Well, I. I've been around a long time, and I think they've all done a very good job. So, well, I think listen, anybody that gets into this position, and we can just get off this topic. Um, I appreciate that, Gene, and I appreciate every board of selectmen or anybody that has stepped up in this position. It's not an easy position to be in. That's right. Um, as you can see, um, mm -hmm. you know, we uh, everybody has the right intentions when they take on this right. on this job, and right. uh, you know, we're always trying to improve. And you know, Absolutely. every year it seems to improve a little bit better. So. To your point, thank you. Right. Okay. This is impressive. Thank you. I didn't see it. Here you go. Thank you. Did you do that PowerPoint? Yes, sir. It's very nice. <laughs> All right, Eric, you want to start off? Sure. Um, well, first off, thank you for, um, you know, I've enjoyed my work so far this year. And, um, Kim asked us to put together a financial report. So uh, we did put together a PowerPoint report. And basically what this report does, it compares um, on the revenue side, it compares the first three months last year versus the first three months this fiscal year. And on the expense side, it compares the first five months last year versus the first five months this year. And as far as extra information goes, I've also attached the expenditure report through uh, November 30th, and this includes all the appropriations that were approved at the town meeting. So that's like backup uh, documentation. <coughs> so I'll just um, I'll walk through this um, report, but I just want to throw out a couple numbers out there just so you have an idea of. Um, and some important numbers for the town. Right now we have um, like 219,000 in unappropriated free cash. There's approximately 660,000 in the stabilization fund, a little over 200,000 in capital stabilization fund, and over 50,000 in the OPEB. So I just, that, those numbers aren't part of the report, but it's good to have a little benchmark of you know where we're at. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to the report. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Page two. Um, basically, the dark green is FY16. Um, the olive green is FY15. No big surprises, um, except I do want to note one thing on the um, first slide up above. You notice like the tax liens were a lot higher last year than they were this year. And if you look at the slide below, the penalties and interest were a lot higher last year than this year. And some of the questions that we had about the free cash is, you know, why was it so high? And uh, one of the answers was that um, Linda did such a great job collecting the taxes last year, we had a one-time source of revenue. Mm -hmm. So that's what that represents. Um, the other uh, part of the revenues that I want to bring to your attention is um, the trash fees look a lot higher last year than they do this year to, the, to date. And this was just a change in the accounting method um, that was used. Last year, um, basically what was used was like a accrual base accounting. And um, this year, we're just using a, a cash basis accounting. So as the cash comes in, we're accounting it as revenue. 
in our previous years, um, the, ca the cash came in, but it, it, um, it was for a subsequent year. So it's just a, that's why. It's deferred. Deferred, yeah, deferred it was revenue. Deferred to the, pre to the following year. So that explains that um, variance. So now if we go to page um, three, um, no big, big surprises. The license of permits were a little higher last year um, at this point in time. And if you go to the bottom uh, slide, uh, that big bar there, that re represents the uh, canine unit uh, gifts and grants that we received in FY16. Um, according to the county records, we had a $5,000 gift and a $25,000 grant um, that was used for the canine. And that, that basically takes care of that. Have you guys seen that? Seen that animal yet? I haven't. That thing is unbelievable. Is it? Yeah. Oh, unbelievable. I can't wait to see it. Um, so when we'll go to page four, um, I just wanted to let you know when we did this analysis, um, we did not include you know bond proceeds because that's not we don't consider that a revenue a liability. Um, the overall revenues decreased a little bit. Um, from FY15, but that's basically because of the way we're accounted for the trash fees and then the tax liens. And um, yeah, for instance, like we even put real numbers here. Like last year, we had 104,000 at this time in past due taxes that were collected, and this year was like $1,100. So that's what the um, differences are there. So that is the revenue side. Now, on the expense side, so so Harry, but sorry before you go on. So yep. so, uh, but in summary as well, you, there's no specific areas of concern. No, Things look right on no, track. Yeah, you? everything's on track. Yeah, and there, there, where there's differences, they're expl explainable, mm -hmm. like we discussed. So everything seems you know good, just okay. kind of what we expect. And one more question on revenues. Um, so yeah. I know it's some sometimes we've had some cash flow issues with the timing of the money coming in, wasn't matching the bills, like paying the school and stuff like that. How are we doing there? That's something that I have to defer to our treasurer because she manages the cash flow. Mm -hmm. I can get to that later if you want. Okay. Uh, okay. Yep. So, all right. So, on the expense side, um, like I said, the expenses we went right through November 30th, and um, I'll explain the year-over-year -year variances. And you know, I was fortunate enough to give the presentation to the selectmen uh, the second time because when we went through it the first time on the FinCom, they had a couple questions and. They since been resolved, so it kind of smoothed out <laughs> <laughs> this presentation a little bit. So, um, no, no, no big surprises really on the expenses. Um, so this just gives the different categories. Is really sorry. Are we on page five? Page five. Yeah. Sorry. Yep. Page five. So we, we can see the general expenses, public safety expenses. You know, building department. Um, we got dispatch. Highway um, is a little bit high um, compared to last year at this time. So building department revenues are, are, are lagging last year? Um, well, this is the ex expense, expense, the expense budget. It's the expense side. This is the expense side. Oh, sorry. Back. Yep, the so expense they had side. more expense last year than yeah, the, At this time, November yeah. last year, November this year. Thank you. Okay, and I'm gonna move over to page uh, six. Um, so actually, can, can we just stay on the uh, building department expenses for a second? Yeah, that's, that's recurring anyway, so what happens, uh, I believe, Gene, correct me if I'm wrong on this, or Linda. Um, we probably had a lot of permits at that time, but we hadn't received the revenue in from the from the permits or something like that. How does that? How I do those don't believe that translate? goes into expenses. Yeah. yeah. Can I mention something? Um, we just did a payroll today, and um, for a couple of the inspectors mm -hmm. that they put through the payroll today, and sometimes I don't know how long, maybe like two months worth of work or something. Right. That makes it's part. We just so, talked about this today. Gail has a tendency to sort of hold a bunch of. Um, fee reimbursements for the inspectors and then submit them all at the same time. So you might so we have catch up payments. Yes. Right. So okay. 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 Yeah. Right. So yeah. So that's why I was asking Linda today. I said, did you get those? Yeah. Cause I had those building inspector payrolls. So um, mm, okay. that's all probably right. what that Thanks. is. Um, okay. Let's see. So we're going to go to page six. Um, the, um, the parks department has a little bit more expenses. Um, this year, I don't. To be honest with you, I didn't even. I don't know what's causing that. Um, that's something I'd have to get back to you on the big bump there. Um, 
if we go to the bottom side on the so, sorry sorry before we move off that yeah um, I can take a guess too. there are no there are no commas so I'm having a little trouble reading it but uh, we saying that's uh, uh, about a thirty thousand dollar delta or three thousand dollar delta yeah with 30 30 thousand okay so wow. I would, I would guess that, that it's a grant that gets a reimbursement, the CP, and the yeah. so the expenses come out of the parks account, Gotta but then be, the grant yeah. is, mm. right. Okay. Because I think there was both um, the ball fields, right, the drainage work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I would have to believe it's definitely something like that. Yeah. We know it is, but uh, okay. can, you, can you just find out? Sure. Right. Um, let's see. Um, the other, if you look at the bottom side, um, the town's retirement assessment went up this year, and Linda probably could speak to that. Um, everything else, you know, what's surprising, the health insurance is basically looks like it's almost level. So um, that's a good thing. Um, now we, we're going to go to page seven now. Um, you know, the, the schools is a little higher this year, and um, that's, you had an override for the schools. Well, they, they right, budget. we're paying them more. Yep. So, um, so that's it. So um, I'm just going to... On bottom of page seven, I have something that's called over expended, and this one I'll ex uh, explain. Um, the water department line item, it's just one line item, one line item that's overspent. It's part of the overall budget, and their overall budget, they're fine. So, you know, town meeting votes, expenses. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, that's just one line item that, that they're like 41% expended for the year. The expected uh, burn rate so to speak, is 42%, five twelves. So that's kind of in line. Um, the wages overtime for police, um, this highway um, detail account in the highway budget, that's overspent, but I have to do a reclassification entry. The chief gave me a letter that I have that's given me permission to charge the highway budget, and you know, uh, Dave's here too. So I'm gonna reclassify those expenses to the highway budget, highway overtime budget. And, and Alan knows about this? Um, uh, yeah, it's actually going to help Alan because Alan's yeah. budget's in deficit right now, mm -hmm. and so we're going to make his budget not be in deficit and charge okay. it to the police. So when you say overexpended here, do you mean overexpended uh, in uh, from the standpoint of at the current pace? No, I mean I mean actually, actually real dollars, real dollars, real dollars. Okay, and we still yep. got a few months left. Yep, that's real dollars. And we still got the rest of the fiscal year left. Yeah, that's why I wanted to understand. That. Yeah, it is real dollars. But this isn't the bottom line. You're saying this is just the line, one line item. Right. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, on this wages, yep. Yeah. Um, and then same thing with the police travel train, that little $264, that's one line item. Their whole expense budget um, is right now 46% expended for the year. Like I said, the burn rate, it to be expected, is like 42%. Um, so that's what's going on there. All right, now we look safety is two thirds of the problem, huh? <laughs> well, um, so I'm going to give a quick little, um, just a little, like a little brief summary here. Um, one thing that we did include when we compared year to year was the 404,000 that was paid uh, for the land purchase because we thought that would skew the numbers, so we just kind of um, didn't include that in our. I think that's good. Yeah. 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 So um, second point, fire department uh, expense accounts. They do have three line items that are above like 80% expended, and um, their burn rate on their budget is like they've expended like 57% of their expenses so far this year, and we're 42% through the year. So I'm not sure why that is, but maybe they have a lot of front-ended expenses. I'm not right, sure. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay, so can I, can I pause you there for a second? So yeah. you, it used to be when uh, when we did these financial reviews, we had all the department heads here, and they would comment real time on this stuff. Is there any reason we did we specifically not do it this way, or did we invite everybody and they just didn't all come? No, we just invited the financial team. Okay. Um, and um, the the total budget um, expense burn rates like forty three percent. The expected is like forty one point six. So, like I said. As far as the expenses go, as far as the timing, we're almost like right on track. 42% through the year, mm -hmm. the total budget's like 43% expended, and that is it. So that's a summary of the revenues and expenses. Well, I've told you in the past, like just my budget, I'm back-ended. I right, do most right. of my spending in the second half of the year because that's when my bigger bills come in. Yeah. yeah. I, I think this is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. This is awesome. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you.
Yep. Linda, want to go next? Yep. Um, I think you have, I sent you electronically the handouts that I had, and I'll have them in the book. Um, uh, the first thing that you should have in your books is a comparison, year to year comparison of the actual cash that I have on hand, or the actual cash balance in some accounts that I have. Sixteen. 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 The hundred thousand dollars that we owe stabilization, I haven't actually moved that yet, so you're going to see a difference. My year to year is just so that you can see a year to year comparison, not because today's values have any value, because as I said, mine are lagging behind Eric's. All right, so. Um, the so your value is just to, to preface that then your year, it would be year end values really is what we'd be. These are as of nine thirty. Well. It's the same period of time, same okay. time period each okay. year for the past three years. Right. And I also, I, I threw in November. Okay. Um, just, just to have a glimpse of today. And um, my point there is that you had asked about cash flow. We are very tight this year. Um, and unfortunately, I can't point to anything specific in that, anything trending in the year to year thing to help you understand that. but. Clearly, with $113,000 more going out each month to the school, mm. as it was planned anyways. Prior um, to us matching it with the revenue, because that hasn't happened yet, right? That's correct. correct. We That's don't right. start, the new revenue doesn't start rolling in until February. February. So right now we're paying uh, fiscal Makes year sense. 16 expenses with fiscal year 15 revenue. Okay. Makes sense. So, um, uh, I was able to talk to Jay Byer from the school, and um, he agreed to uh, lessen the, the monthly payments that we have going out to the school, mm -hmm. uh, so that it just it you're just going to back end, end, just like we're getting the revenue yeah. in. Yeah, unfortunately, I had already paid three months of the higher rate, so but yeah, still, he he did something. We we arranged it so that I wouldn't have to really uh, double up on the payments until after February. So that was uh, okay. Good so I just, before you go on, I just want to make sure that. Anybody listening, they're crystal clear on what you just said, right? It's not that, because you know, even Ed Thompson asked me, well, does that mean you're broke? No, it doesn't mean we're broke. It, it, <laughs> it means that the timing of the revenue coming in mm -hmm. isn't the same as the expenses that need to go out. It's a cash flow problem. We have exact, the budget does exact, is going to do exactly what it's going to do. Mm -hmm. It's just a cash flow issue. And, and, and you've said that yeah. through agreement with mm -hmm. the school. Mm -hmm. To helping us correct that problem, at least. For and we've done this in years past. This is not uncommon. We've not, in my experience, uh, adjusted the adjusted the monthly amount that we owe. Normally, it's just twelve equal months, mm. and and whatever it is, it is. Mm -hmm. um, but the twelve equal months, that was seven hundred and seventy-four thousand dollars a month versus six hundred and sixty thousand dollars a month, um, and it was just too much to bite off. It, sure. when, you're, when you're talking about last year's level of, of revenue. Gotcha. 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 So, but I, but, but to, this to situation is unique to this year, though. So I get that. I get that. But I, but to Selectman Burke's point, though, it seems to me that in the past we occasionally bumped into a timing issue as okay. well. Yes. So what you're talking about, and um, what you touched on before, was that there is um, an unwritten agreement, and the school has allowed us to simply delay paying them until I have enough money to pay them. They still get cut a check every single month. Mm -hmm. At the end of the month, they get cut a check. If I don't have enough money to cover it in my bank accounts, and you will see this in um, 2013 and in 2015, you see big negative numbers in our checking slash expense account. Yep. Okay? That's because a school check was cut, and I was holding it till I had enough money. Mm -hmm. um, I've never held it more than three weeks. Um, generally, we pay, I would say, probably five months out of the year, the school is gracious enough to just give us a little bit of some slack. Sure. If they didn't, I would have to be 
anticipating when I needed to either borrow from stabilization or get statehouse notice. But the bottom line is, to uh, Sluckman Schofield's point, is, is that it's a, it's a cash flow timing issue. You know, you know. But the, the reason I asked about it, number one, because you'd, you you'd brought it up, but number two is, isn't there something we can do, change, change the way we do things so that we don't have this problem? Isn't it? There, there must be something we can well, do. First of all, this, like I said, is unique to this year. In yeah, that, that problem, That yes. large override sure. was yeah. deferred until the last two payments, only due to timing right. of yeah. the vote. Right. That's I, right. I get that. I get that. But I'm speaking, talking about this issue yes, she's talking speaking, about. Yeah. Only to the cash flow. Um, we could, you know, I could approach the school. Now, you have to realize the school, our monthly payments are paying the school's expenses. Whether or not the school can agree to delay the, or, or back end our payments so that the first half of the year. Yeah, that's not really what I'm suggesting. Okay. I'm suggesting that we do something differently to get the revenue timed differently so that we have the money oh, to pay. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, going forward, this override will be distributed over four. Okay, no, no, no I get yeah. that, but we're, we're mixing. Yes. I mean, it is the same thing, but th this is this is exacerbating a problem. I invi I feel like we've had anyway. Yes, Rich, yeah. you, there, we, it could, we could, hmm. we could. There is an option, and I'm not sure that the assessors actually. I should let James speak to it. Um, it's simply rearranging how much of a percentage we have coming out of the first two installments. In, in previous years, it's been 50-50. That is within the purview of the Board of, Select, Board of Assessors Office, yes. Okay. And to tell you this, that had that override passed prior to the calculations of the preliminary bills, I would have included that on the preliminary bills. Okay, but 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 st still, but going there's still forward, two different, there's still we two can, different things here. I have the ability to increase the preliminary bills by the two and a half percent. Okay, I still, I, I, st I think I, Rich is talking about yeah. forget about the. Well, the that override. brings in a bigger cash flow on those first two payments. Right, but he's saying regardless of what happened with the override, there were still cash flow problems anyway. Right. Right. Yes. So is there something so pretend we can do the, about that? Right. So pretend the override didn't happen. So right. going into next year's preliminary billing, I could increase those tax bills by two and a half percent. That will okay, help you, a little. But you're not increasing taxes. You're just redistributing how it gets paid. Right. Instead of what, what people understand. when we initially went over to quarterly tax billing, I did do that. The what? first couple of years, I actually increased the preliminary tax bill. However, the previous treasurer collector had difficulty with that. I also included new growth, which had to manually be put in. So she came to me at one point and asked me not to do that anymore only because it was creating a lot of more work in her office and a lot more um, chance of errors. Okay, so consider this then a formal request on my part to, to research what it would take and whether you're comfortable with the assessor's office doing that because to me we should be paying our bills on time mm -hmm. with cash flow that's appropriate to when our bills come in. Yeah. I can just add here that I've seen this practice takes place in three out of the last four municipalities I've worked in. It's not uncommon. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure it's no, not. No, it's not. And we did do research after that and found out that most municipalities do it the way it's now being done. They just... Do it the way it's now being done here or being done? The way it's being done here as far as the quarterly or the preliminary bills. They're just taking the previous year's tax payments and dividing them by four. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and Rich, if, um, if, that, if paying the bills, or, and it's the school bill, there are no mm -hmm. other bills that, that have to wait. Um, the school bill is just so it's huge. huge. So, I mean, you know, it's the one that gets picked yeah. on. Right. Um, yeah. Could even if we didn't change anything with how we allocate the, the revenue throughout the year um, or anticipate that you know, when we're setting up the tax bills, um, I can always come to the board and ask you and just do a temporary borrowing from stabilization and have it paid back as soon as I can. That seems to me to be a little bit more work than it's worth if I have a school person uh, you know the treasurer there who's perfectly willing to say yeah you know we're okay this this week he has told me that there are months that he can't do that that it's not they can't 
they can't allow that. Okay, so what happens if there's a month they can't do that and? I anticipate that. I know that there are months, June and July, I believe, that they can't entertain any thoughts of a delay because they've got to pay all their summer. They've got to pay their so do I, do I interpret this exchange as you saying um, that you already know that your recommendation would not be to change anything, just to keep doing what we're doing? Uh, no, if you, if, if, no, I'm saying there's a couple different options to satisfy what I think you want to do, yeah. and it, it can be done. It can be done either on the tax billing side, or it can be done on a month-to-month -month basis from an internal borrowing side of things. Okay, so I, I would like to hear, I would like them to investigate and then give us back a recommendation of how yep. they do I would agree with that. Sure. Yeah. I think it's going to take doing it like we can do it next year and see how Linda likes it. It's not, you know, it's not a, a huge, you know, we can run a scenario though, issue right? for me to increase the taxes by the 2.5% and new growth. But like I said, I think on the KDS side, it's a lot more work because you, that has to be manually input. Would you like to see just a scenario play out? I mean, we could do a dry run and see how it all works out, or would you want to wait till next I, year? I don't, I don't, I don't want to, f if the previous treasurer collector found it labor intensive hmm. or, or whatever, I, I just like to know whether the current treasurer collector feels it would be the same way. Mm -hmm. if, she, if she were to say to us, you know what, I, it's better to leave it the way it is because of blah, 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 and blah, or I agree mm -hmm. with the, then okay, I'd accept that. But I would just like to, have it looked at and then give us a recommendation on what you think. Okay, I can I can look into it. I'm I'm that's not a problem. Okay. Okay. So, um, but anyways, back to this particular spreadsheet. Uh, so there's the numbers year to year. Um, I'm afraid I really can't interpret them. Uh, you know, point anything specific out about them as just that. You know, that's kind of them. The cash is tight. Um, it's understandable that it's tight. We're working around it. I've got one more month to get through. You know, January is going to be tough, but you know, it'll happen. And then your prediction is after uh, things start really coming in at the higher rates, then we should be in a much better yeah. position. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I remember last year I didn't feel any. Over a million more dollars coming right. in. Right. Then exactly. the excise tax comes exactly. too. Right. And then there'll be. And the excise tax yeah. will, you know, exactly. we always get okay. that right out. Yep. yep. Okay. okay. Then there was another. Um, uh, okay. So get it keeping. Um, in line with the um, cash flow, the past few years, uh, and uh, I did focus a lot on um, tax title. It did take me all of the three years to sort of get up to it, get up to speed with it, find a rhythm, and, and keep going with it. We've hit that rhythm, we've hit our stride right now, and we have tax title well under control. Mm -hmm. um, but um, what that means is that I can also focus on a, replacing the cash flow that I won't have anymore from those one-time hits of tax title coming in. Um, and B, I can focus on um, unloading some of the uh, properties that the town has, that the town owns. Um, there is a piece, yep, there's a list of town-owned properties that you have. And at the bottom of the list, the, the second page of the list, um, there are most of the town on property we own we we are keeping for our own purposes there's a list of tax taking and others that i'm not exactly sure how we came about owning them but there's others uh and i can add to that list three more that we just um foreclosed on little pieces here and there uh, and i expect another one coming in uh, pretty soon but some of these pieces of property are property that we don't need they exist we don't need them. They're not part of any large plan. And um, I'm, I'm going to look into my, my project this year, my challenge for my own, my own self this year, is to uh, sell them. I will have to talk. Oh, um, I know that the uh, Land Use Committee has their sort of sights on one of them. But that is going to have to be a discussion. You know, do you... There's a couple, there's at least one piece out on um, uh, Pleasant Street that we haven't foreclosed on yet, but I anticipate it coming in soon. It's quite a few acres, and um, you know, the town has to decide, do you want the good amount of money that, that that buildable piece of land will bring in, or do you want to keep it for some larger plan that, that is going on? Um, there's a couple little pieces I can think of a couple like one acre pieces or two acre pieces 
that aren't really good for development but might be worth some money to the neighbor to uh, just give themselves a little bit of a bigger piece of land, get them back on the tax rolls. But that is sort of my challenge. It won't be probably as much money as um, catching up with tax title did, but. Okay. Well, 15 Inman Hill Road was uh, specifically broken out to be sold as a lot and uh, was never, yep. there, was a, there was one attempt at one point and there was some difficulty and the land was redesigned to prevent it being contiguous with a bigger parcel behind it for future development. And then nothing ever happened with it. So that, that's a beautiful building lot up on. Is that the one at the very top? I'm not exactly sure it's at the very, it's but the it's, it it's was specifically the engineered for sale for yeah. a building lot by the town. Tell me again why the, the, the line there in the middle of the second page, that's everything underneath that is right. not it's, it's stuff? The, not town yet. Okay. That's okay. Cool. Okay. So, I mean, that's sort of like, uh, that's just to give you an idea of what I'm thinking about when it comes to Always cash good. flow and maybe improving a little bit of the cash, unload some of these excess pro properties. Sure. Some of them that are really low value, I think I can, uh, and by low value, I mean less than something like $21,000 in value. I can just get rid of them with a realtor. I don't have to go through any, jump through any hoops auctions, stuff like that. This is awesome, Wendy. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, and then the third thing I had uh, there was just, um, I recapped um, your CPA number. That was just for curiosity's sake, where we stand. And all these numbers agree with uh, what's on the books for the, from the accountant, so. Great. As we're going forward, you might be thinking, what can I use CPA money for? You know, how much do we have left? There's where it's at today. And this includes everything through November. All right, Gene. Uh, sorry, I'm, um, I'm having a little trouble reading this right here. I'm not sure I CPA. I, no, no, I, I get a CPA, yeah. right? Yeah. But I'm, I'm having trouble with. Oh, what okay. I'm just look at the bottom. All of the all of those things are my big long explanation. It's just me. That's me keeping track. Okay. So the, so the, the highlighted the numbers along the bottom, yeah. the current balance. Is yes. that right? Yes. Okay. That that gives it to me right there. Thank you. Um, we're going to run out of tape, so instead of cutting you off in the middle, do you want to change the um, disc now? Okay, we're going to take a, a recess.